I'm Becca. I'm Naomi. And we are the backyard again. <laughs> <laughs> just, just it's a good way to start it. <laughs> okay, what are you going to ask me? Um, well, yeah, so for people who don't know, I guess, our relationship, I started my doula training. Naomi is my first client. Mm-hmm. Um, also just a good friend in the Meredith community here. And yeah, I came can... from New York. Yep. I saw her. This is how I know Becca. So mm-hmm. I saw her video on YouTube. Um, actually, take it back a few nights. <laughs> I was in some Facebook groups. Mm-hmm. And I was saying, hey, I want to go to Mexico to give birth and whatnot. And they were like, hey, have you seen this video? Hey, do you know Samaya? Hey, do you know? They just give me all of the connections out here. And I was like, whoa. So first thing is, I'm a YouTuber too. So I was like, let me go check out the next YouTuber. Mm -hmm. So that's when I went to your page. I saw Mm -hmm. her birth and vlog. Uh, Before I saw your birth and vlog, I saw your postpartum vlog where you talked about the birth story. Okay. And I was like, oh, she's talking about Sumi. So then I added Sumi as a friend. She didn't add me back yet. I kept watching the video. and I just see all the love that you had at your your birth and everything. So I was like, I'm going to go to Merida. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go out there. I'm going to give birth. And, again, I didn't know Becca at all. I never reached out to her. I actually saw you a couple of times here. Before you talked to me? Yeah. Right before we met, met? I saw you at Sunday dinner. You invited me to? Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so before I came to live with them, I oh, saw... Oh, yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah, mm-hmm. I knew you... Um, at the school. At the school mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So that's why I came to Merida because I'm like, they're real. They're alive. <laughs> She's not dead. <laughs> I'm here. It works. So, <laughs> so I booked my flight. I was out in like two weeks. I was out. Dang. I never thought that I would be in your house though. That is really wild. And I never met any YouTubers before I met y'all. Wow. Ever. I never did collaboration Just... or anything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I met you at Starbucks the first time, right? Yeah. Because I reached out if there was any mothers here that needed doula care yeah. and postpartum support. So I gave me that. I was so nervous in front of you. I was like, oh, hi. Because <laughs> you usually meet doulas like in the States over the phone. You always talk like, hey, whatever, when is going to be your first appointment? Mm-hmm. But I didn't already see you before at school. So I'm like, oh, this is the woman that's coming to see me. Oh, got you, yeah. got you. So how'd you feel after? Were you still nervous? No, no, I was good. That? Yeah. Cool. I was like, oh, they're nice people here. <laughs> yeah, there is. It's a good birth work community. Good. Mm-hmm. A lot of people coming to give birth here, honestly. So. Yeah. Yeah. They joke like this is gonna be the postpartum house. Yes, Julian was born here. Imuna was born here. Just keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows who's next? Right. Each Maybe queen. next time it's on the couch downstairs. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Cool. So, yeah, um, she did. You traveled here really quick to give birth. And how was the experience for you? So, essentially, my birth experience was, it was nice. (laughs) I was out with my nanny, having fun with my friend, eating. And then I made a joke in the birth um, group chat that I have. So, it's Becca, Daisy, and Sumi. Right? Mm-hmm. There's somebody else in there I don't know. But yeah. Like, it's us. Yeah. Um, and I was like, hey, yeah, I think my water just broke. And they're like, Becca was like, need to get... It was so funny because if you go back to the messages, you're the only one that's so worried. She's oh, like, dang. do you need to get home? Do you need to go get you? I'm only down the street. I can get mm-hmm. you over. Very supportive. I'm like, Becca, I don't want to come home. Well, <laughs> I'm outside. So <laughs> I go to the Last pizza, minutes of freedom. Right? <laughs> I go to the pizza party or whatnot. And then... Um, I'm like, hey, can you come get Malachi? My son out the car, he's heavy. You come, y'all come out fast. You and Cam was like, I was like, I love this. Y'all are great. Mm-hmm. And then she had food ready. She everything was nice. I come upstairs. I lay my son down, and then that's when it's like my water just broke. Everything just broke. Oof, that was it. Um, I called Sumi. I was telling Sumi, well, she called me, but I was telling her about um, the contractions, how far apart they were. And then she was like, wake up, Becca. Because Becca was like, I'll go to sleep. If you need anything, just let me know. And I'm like, I don't want to wake up, Becca. <laughs> so I didn't reach out to you for mm-hmm. like, like an hour. Yeah. Was it an hour? Yeah, how, when did you get home? Like 9.30? 9.30. True fashion started like 10.03. Yeah, and then I think at 11, I reached you out read, to yeah, reached out to me. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as Becca walked in, I kid you not, I felt like this love, like, it's one thing doing it by yourself, but then when you walked in, I felt like this love that was like, 
I'm here for you. Yeah. Give me a hand if you need it. So I was uh-huh. crying. I was like, you know, the kids cry when you get them a hug. Yes, yeah. Like after a long day away, they're just yeah. like, oh. I need you. Yeah. Safety, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's how I felt immediately. Cool. Um, and then Becca started calling everybody, and what, 2 a.m., I had the baby. Yeah, it was pretty. Yeah. Pretty fast, but it was good. It, it was, was nice. Mm-hmm. They watched me. They motivated me. They were there to rub my back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know one thing you had said before. I don't know if you like touch, but if you do, let me know. If you don't, I never yeah. let you know. So I don't even think, was you rubbing my back or was that? I was not rubbing your back. The most I touched you was. Um, before Melanie came in. Yeah, I kind. You were just kind of reaching for things, and I just kind of put my hand there, and I think you grabbed my hand. So you didn't like. Yeah. One thing I did directly remember, tell me. Uh-huh. I, one thing I did remember when you gave me your hand. Uh huh. You gave me your hand. I was literally like right there, um, and I was squeezing her hand because the contraction came. So I was squeezing her hand, squeezing heart, and it was like, I I knew I wasn't hurting her. She's yeah. a fighter. <laughs> I'm like this hard hand. Yeah, no, yeah, you were good. You I were was good. like literally. You're strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, I felt so weak because I'm trying to like really hurt her a little bit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> nope, you didn't get me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah. yeah. Tried to let you just like maybe mm-hmm. try to intuit if touch would be a thing or not, and I feel like it worked out yeah. well with everybody. I like touch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it worked out mm-hmm. pretty well. Another thing is like you were on it. You were on it. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, I need water on my back. I was trying all these different positions. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I need a shower. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't know when you ran to turn up the water, but mm-hmm. it was, like, perfect. Yeah, that was good timing because I did forget, to turn. like, to turn. When your water had broke, I didn't think of it. And then I was like, oh, wait, like, we it might came need in some fast. hot water. Yeah, it was good. It worked out well. Yeah. Yeah, everything flowed very, very nicely. Like, even having Julian mm-hmm. having to go and nurse him, mm-hmm. like, he was asleep when I first came in. I yeah, he was asleep when I first came in, and right when Melanie came, he woke up. So it was perfect. It was like I can hand oh. you off to Melanie and go take care of, wow. you know. So you weren't. Yeah, it was everything like, like everything insane. really flowed so wow. beautifully. Yeah, I just like got a little bit chills. So yeah, yeah, it was nice. <laughs> I didn't even know mm-hmm. that people was walking in and out. I was so um, in my head. Yep. Like I didn't even know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, no, I think um, being, like, supporting someone through birth after having gone through my own birth, especially mm-hmm. home birth, like, it's different. It's different now, like, how I, than how I would have supported someone before I had before kids. Before you had yeah. a child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and gone through it myself, so. You made me want to be a doula. I yeah. think any mom is ingrained in them to be doulas. It's a very natural. It is. Mm-hmm. And if you had a doula before who wasn't a mom, because I did, mm-hmm. she wasn't a mom. And it was like, it was just totally different. Like, mm-hmm. She didn't, it wasn't just a natural instinct in her. You mm-hmm. know? Interesting. It's very, I, I realized that since I gave birth here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. very different. Um, you got that mothering hand. <laughs> cool. Yeah. It's forced upon me. <laughs> um yeah how was your time leading up to the birth like prenatal being pregnant here coming into a new um, community all this stuff so being pregnant here was like a breeze i literally was eight months i would say i mm-hmm. was on i found out that uber out here had the motorcycles the moto i was mm-hmm. on it when i found out you could get on there and they don't even mind getting on being pregnant the men look at you like oh you sure mm-hmm. and i'm like let's do it <laughs> so i'm over there with the breeze and my hair i'm pregnant i'm like i'm taking risks with this baby so mm-hmm. everything everything was it went really well i feel like um i was going through some sense of depression or it could have came upon me if i was still in the states so since i came out here me and my son was able to bond more before the baby mm-hmm. um now i'm tired of him <laughs> but uh yeah i i think it everything went well it's like i was meant to give birth here mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. giving birth abroad yeah i will say i think leaving um america you see a lot of freedom in how you can parent how you can like go through pregnancy in other countries there's not as much like Oh, you have to have this car seat and it has to be a newest model yeah. and yeah you have to this and this and this and it's like people are a little looser because I think they're a little bit more connected to like the natural process of birth yeah. and raising children and family and 
And it's yeah. Mexico. They have all the babies anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they do. It's family oriented. Another thing out here is like, um, I knew for my, I was pregnant, so I knew for my son, I need to give him a better life while I'm still pregnant because I'm going to be busy when I have the baby. And um, just being out here in Merida is where the family is at, you know, of this part of Mexico. So I was thinking like, okay, what can I get him into? Who can I connect him with? So I did the nature school. Mm-hmm. Um, I hopped in some WhatsApp groups where other people go out to the park at certain times. And it's just very, like, free. Like, like mm-hmm. what you were saying. It's very free. A lot of children, a lot of love. Um, so I know I want that for her, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's perfect. So I was thinking, it's, I think it's really good that I'm giving both of them the option, like with the residency. Yeah. Um, if they want to choose to come back over here, like, hey, y'all can stay in America if y'all want that hell hole. <laughs> but if you want to come back out here, you know, I did that for you mm-hmm. while I was able to. Right, right. I think, it's, I think it's really good. For sure. Every mom that comes out here and do this. Yeah, it's um, very, like... Almost kind of humbling thing, like, Mexico's so accepting of getting citizens and having people come travel here, whereas, like, for Mexican citizens to go to America, it's so much harder, it's so much more of a headache, so it's, like, yeah, it's um, it's really nice that they still are so welcome to us. Yeah, and the people are so friendly out here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even at the embassy, they're very friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I still can't, like, even though I'm talking right now about it, it's still, like, a point where I'm, like really over here like I can't remember the last day I was sitting in my apartment in New York and I'm just like I'm gonna go I never knew it would turn out like this it turned out better than I expected That's a good thing. it really did yeah. and coming abroad actually makes me like realize a lot of materialistic stuff does not matter mm-hmm. I have everything for a moon at my house everything and out here I have some stuff but I'm still like you're still blessed in so many ways like the stuff that I have don't even matter at this point. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I really believe that. Go with the flow. Go where faith take you. And you have everything. Mm-hmm. Everything's going to be there for you. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it for sure. There's a good community here to support that type of, like, mm-hmm. lifestyle as well. Like, at least with my birth, we had a lot of hand-me-downs. I know you had, like, a lot of people cooking and stuff. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Okay. Nurse. Nurse me Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
And Dr. Felix is who I was seeing, and he's really nice. He speaks English, he's funny, mm -hmm. he's nice, he's straight to the point. Um, very supportive of home birth. Very supportive, like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he, okay, my mm -hmm. Becca, I'm going to join the eating team. Okay. <laughs> she was like, ooh, yeah, that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I smell mommy's milk from mm -hmm. over there. Something's happening. You having a piece? She doesn't want it. <laughs> yeah, he, he's not gonna cut this far. No. <laughs> he's not gonna cut this. No. He doesn't use. She doesn't want it. Okay, my mom. Okay, okay. But yeah, so Doctor Felix was nice. Uh, he got everything done. Very straight to the point. Um, and I was able to get my paperwork done. I know one time he was like, "Hey, Naomi, you gotta get on it." Like I told you last last appointment to bring your paperwork because it's a certain time he has to put it in and I was kind of behind so if y'all come out here make sure y'all put your paperwork in on time mm -hmm. so he can do the proof of life but I just can't ever I don't even want to go back home at this point yeah. <laughs> I just can't go back I would like really root for everybody to come out here and give birth I would how was um the paperwork like you were mentioning having to do all that stuff how's the whole process for you so far i i think so far i'm finished no you're done with everything i don't oh, know no, not the best part. Uh -huh. the best part. um the paperwork is easy mm -hmm. i feel like it's better if you do have somebody with you that speaks spanish mm -hmm. uh, along the way mm, let me see the proof of life i had Sumi with me so she was able to that's another good thing about her as a midwife she actually come pick you up she spend time with you and she helps you along the way Mm -hmm. Like she's not the one that would just give birth, like help you give birth, and then just be like, okay, figure it out. Like no, mm -hmm. they're really like loving and mm -hmm. hand to hand out here. Um, but yeah, so she helped me with the proof of life. That's basically an affidavit, right? Yeah, saying that like the child, there was a child born, and then you have to go and get the citizenship paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. So I got that done with her, and then I got the birth certificate done with my nanny. Um, we went to, um, what is it? Help me out here. The civil registry? Yeah. Re Reg civil, re civil registry? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We went there, got the paperwork done there. It was pretty easy. Everything mm -hmm. was easy. Mm -hmm. Straightforward. Especially if you have someone who speaks Spanish, it's just easier. Mm -hmm. Um, Wanda got her little fingerprint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Julian too. I think the most hard is the U.S. side of things, like having yeah. to get the the birth report abroad. That's, That's the hardest part like. for me right yeah. now. Getting her passport, I got pushback, unfortunately, because I didn't have. It's, they want too much. They want too much. They want five years stating that I was present in the U.S. Um, so I sent that over to them now. And I actually need to make another appointment. So you can just make sure you have everything with you or make sure you read correctly their email that they send you because I did not. And now I'm still mm -hmm. no passport. No it passport. also seems like it kind of depends who's at the desk that day when you're like getting your paperwork because I've heard a range of stories of like yes they want all this documented stuff to prove your citizenship and then I've heard it's like oh we had all this paperwork they didn't even look at it mm -hmm. so it's different um um yeah so I would just say be connected with people yeah um definitely when you out there trying to do this but everything will really work out it's not as, as hard as you see as, as it seems mm-hmm because mm -hmm. there was not one point where I was like, am I going to get my baby back home? Mm -hmm. When I was at that um, passport place by myself, yes, I was like, this is not working out. I'm mm -hmm. missing a paper. Because um, they, they, they literally give you one time to get the emergency passport. Oh. That first time you go in, you can get the emergency passport. So if you're going to leave the next week or two yeah. weeks, you can get it. Um, another mom who gave birth out here, she was telling me that in mm -hmm. she was telling me that you have to show a return flight. They didn't ask me for that. They were going to mm -hmm. give it to me right then and there. I yeah. just didn't show that I was in the U.S. for five years. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. And then other moms don't have to show that if they was in the U.S. for five years. So it yeah. just depends. It depends who you have, honestly. They're giving me a hard time, man. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Um, yeah, I would say definitely try to, if you are going to come give birth out here, try to look at the things you'll need for citizenship and travel beforehand because there might even be things that... Um, yeah that changed or like oh you're like oh damn like I have that in my house right now but I'm here in Mexico and I'm just finding out about it so it can be kind of frustrating um, but honestly compared to what other countries have to do to get citizenship it's a pretty easy process for an American citizen yeah um, so how was your here process of Getting a nanny, like finding that sort of stuff. Oh, we go way back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so there again, there's a community out here that you can reach out to. Um, I was connected with a good friend of all of ours, Melanie. Mm-hmm. So she does service work. So she'll find you a house. She'll find you a nanny. Anything you need. Playing a birthday party. Yeah, yeah lots of stuff. She does. She does it all. So mm-hmm. um, literally, I reached out to her and I told her what I needed in the states. By the time I got out here, it changed um, the availability I needed and stuff. So I just updated her, and she she sourced for me. She was able to find me someone. Um, the nannies out here, they say they do just walk away from you. Um, and one did for me. Mm-hmm. She worked with me for a week, and she just left. I don't know why. But she was good while she lasted. Mm-hmm. Now I have another one who's amazing. Mm-hmm. She's really a grandma. Um, so... I think it's good. Yeah. Very affordable. Very affordable. Um, yeah, it's another good way to get support. Yeah. Another support. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you say nanny in the States. They're like, bro, I can't afford that. Right. It's a very luxury. Luxury, luxury thing. thing. Yeah. Out here, they're ready to work. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't come up with anything else. I'm trying to think now, too. Um, I think that's good. Yeah. I think so. Uh, let me see. When do you have to go back, back to the States? Yeah. Um, I wanted to go back to the States when I left co-living with you. Mm-hmm. But since another family out here that's in the community offered me to house sit their home I was like why not get that extra support with my nanny stay out here a little longer I heal up more recovery exactly. recovery yeah mm-hmm. um, before just hopping my postpartum body right on the flight mm-hmm. with, with two, two kids <laughs> I can't imagine it yeah cause Merida I have to go fly out of, from Cancun I have to take the auto bus mm-hmm. so yeah. that's then fly out to whoa it's a lot it's like a whole day yeah so I'm going to stay another month. Good. I'm going to house it. And mm-hmm. even even after I house it, if everything's going the way it goes, I, well, I got to get back home. Mm-hmm. But then I want to come back out here yeah. eventually because I'm going to apply for my residency. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mama, so you can live here. There's a lot of good postpartum support here. Mm-hmm. From the food, from you. Oh, Becca postpartum support it was, was good. Was good. Yeah. I'll be thinking like, oh no, I'm failing her. Like, <laughs> no, for you, okay. for you, it was so amazing. Yeah. Especially mm-hmm. you being new as a doula. I think you gave me your your all. Cool. I really did. It was like to the point where I was making too much milk because she kept feeding me. And she's vegan, so she just kept feeding me and feeding me every two hours. And I'm not. You need something. I'm not. You need something. It was really good. Mm-hmm. It was really good. I couldn't even imagine, like, if I didn't have Becca as postpartum mm. support. Like, I believe postpartum support is really what puts you on um, your your new way of life. Hell so yeah. So you need that. Hell yeah. So you you started me on my new journey. Mm. Like, you, you, what is that word? Like, you scoped me out. Scoped <laughs> me Yeah, I think that's the word. Like, led you, you on your way. Yeah, yeah, you led me on my way. Mm-hmm. You formed me. Um, yeah. From the beginning. Oh, that's such a beautiful thing. From wow. the food, from the support, just mm-hmm. everything. And mm-hmm. it got really lonely in this room. And she'll come in and try to talk to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just kind of like, oh. That's what I wasn't sure about. If I was giving you, like, enough 
social emotional mm-hmm. support or like too much or like you know well, the uh, balance uh, of it we still was getting to know each other too mm-hmm, true so i don't think that even if you wanted to give me more social support it probably would be weird to me or you right anyway. right yeah because it's like we barely knew each other <laughs> yes she was my dude i had like what one appointment with you or two, uh, one two. In my yeah. Uh-huh. yeah and at dr felix's oh you yeah. did yeah. 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 yeah so we had like three appointments together mm-hmm. um meeting yeah. each other before I actually came to give birth here. So, and like live. And yeah. live. Yeah. Here. I gave birth and live. I, I gave birth and then you have to get up and go. Yeah. Like, perfect. Mm-hmm. Then you need someone address too with the paperwork. You need to use somebody's address for their electricity right. bill. Yeah. So I was able to use her. It was just like everything was just perfect. It was mm-hmm. just, it was mm-hmm. meant to be. Mm-hmm. Um, for sure. But I think with those three visits that we knew each other, you couldn't give me the social time, or I couldn't give you the social time that we both probably would desire. Right, yeah. Because we know each other. <laughs> right, right. We're still, there's like that, like, oh, who are you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm in your house, but who are you? Right, exactly. I think they tired of me now. Me and my son, they ready for us to go. <laughs> they yeah. ready for us to get out. I do appreciate my space, but y'all are not hard to have around. No, no, toddler. My three-year-old. He's he's a lot. Yeah, it was good practice though yeah, for me was. in terms of I was like just had kind of three kids for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> like occasionally and be like, oh, and this is what three kids boy. is like. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, Julian's a boy. He's gonna be rough. Mm-hmm. He's gonna be a fighter. Yeah, I feel like in the same way you said I kind of put you out on your mother of two journey, I feel mm-hmm. like you definitely helped form me as, like, my doula journey. Like, yeah. Having, like, the first one. Yeah, for sure. It definitely oh, taught me good. a lot about myself, about who I want to be as, like, a caregiver, especially for people going through a huge transition, like, new baby. So yeah. it gave me a lot of confidence. It gave me a lot of insight to, like, how I operate, um, yeah, that's good. Things, yeah, that's boundary good. setting, like, okay, how much can I give mm-hmm. to where I'm not depleted and like still like not fail like, you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. There were some times where you were just tired. I'm was, like, yeah. Becca, mm-hmm. you're human. I know. Yeah, like, you literally had to tell me like, it's yeah, okay, it's, it's okay. <laughs> like, I literally would have food or something to drink already right here, and she's just like, "Are you sure it's enough?" Mm-hmm. And I'm like, relax, because like, you're doing more than great. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's really good. But you also helped me see what a doula is. I never had mm-hmm. a doula before, Becca. Um, with Malachi, he was born in a hospital. I never had a doula. Mm-hmm. And then I was looking for a doula. And that's another thing why I came out here. Because I knew that they said there was doulas out here. There yeah. were you, there were Daisy. Well, I don't mm-hmm. think they mentioned you at the time. But no, they said yeah. Daisy and I think Eva or somebody like that. Yep, Eva. There's a lot of other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, I never had a doula. And I'm like, okay, for sure I'll get one when I'm out there. And the All States right. was giving me a hard time trying to find a doula. Mm. And even when I found one, it was just like she'll talk to me over the phone and she's just not it. Mm. Uh-huh. Either she's a mom or she's just not it. Mm. So I never set one on one with a doula. Actually, I did one time before I came out here. She was really looking for it, but she wasn't a mom. Oh, that's so I knew saying. that it was, felt yeah, different. It felt different. She was good. She was new. I was her first client, but she's not a mom. Mm. So I think that mother and instinct really means a lot to me for me yeah you want to feel like you can relate on that <laughs> level <laughs> yeah it's such a good experience for sure yeah a really good experience mm-hmm. i would suggest anybody come do it do it do it yes, come please. to mexico <laughs> definitely more than enough people here to support you and it's not even about just giving birth it's just the things y'all do like by yourself, like, hey, they take them to the group. Hey, I want to go to the beach. Everybody's coming out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. the Sunday dinner is really what, like touch to me. I was still eight months, nine months postpartum, but it was like touch me. I'm like, they come together every Sunday. Like, you have family who don't even do this. It's true, yeah. It's definitely true. Everybody come bring food. Y'all come talk, socialize. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It makes it very easy to parent. Like. I know, it's so boring just being in the house with your kids, no other adults, no other kids for your kids to play with. So you just need that, like, Everybody community. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, oh, you got 
hand me down clothes. Oh, I'm not using this car seat anymore. Do you need a car seat? Oh, I'm getting rid of my whole car. Do you need a car? Like, <laughs> there's there's all, you know, there's... She actually needs to your set. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? Like, so it's, much. It's beyond love. Yeah. I know Daisy offered me her place, too. Oh, oh yeah? That was okay. Color and Keisha. Yeah. Gotcha. Wait. I forgot. Wow. Ro offered me her place before I even came to you. Before I even went to my own apartment. Oh, wow. I just forgot. Yeah, yeah. I just be on the move trying to figure it out. Right. That's another thing. Like, with me, I had it really bad trying to figure it out myself when the, everybody was right there to help. Mm. It was just a text message away. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I felt like I didn't really know them enough to ask. But it was mm-hmm. like... One of the moms out here, she just went back to the States, but she was like, you never had a community pour into you before? And I'm like, this is my first, especially in a foreign country. Yeah, it makes a huge difference, huge difference. Even for, like, my experience, when people would make you meals, it was really kind of like pouring into myself, too, because it's one less thing I have to, like, to do. do. Yeah, so it was like, not only are they supporting you, but they're supporting me, supporting you. So, yeah. I didn't even talk about that, the meal train. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so everybody knew that I was living with Becca at the time, and Becca had her own family she tended to as well by helping me and my little family in this room. So they started a postpartum meal train for me. Thank you, Anastasia, if you're mm-hmm. watching this. Um, she started a postpartum meal train, and basically she just sent out the link, and everybody would like come in and choose a day that they're going to come bring food or Uber some food over here. and. That really helped a lot. Yeah, for sure. Um, even if they couldn't order food, they gave me funds for the fruiteria, some coconut water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been really nice. Mm-hmm. Even your neighbor, I know, I never saw her neighbor, before. Yeah, and um, the, yeah, there's the a other few people you didn't know. Yeah, yeah I never saw just, him before. I was in this room. Mm-hmm. Becca would come knock, knock. Somebody gave you this. I'm mm-hmm. like, what? Yeah. It's a very giving community. I saw her now, though. Yeah, yeah okay. Was, yeah. Oh, yeah, very giving community. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I think when you travel, you kind of understand that you get yourself in some positions where you really need some help sometimes. Yeah. So a lot of times you've been helped by someone else and feel the need to, to help spread it, you know? Like, oh, yeah, I remember being in that exact position or something like that. This, I know this journey coming to Mexico is going to take me far. I want to go to Costa Rica next. Yeah. Yeah, you're going back to Vietnam, right? Vietnam? I really want to go back to Asia. Yeah, I definitely want to see Vietnam again, but other parts of Asia as well. Yeah. I used to get little Julian on a little motorbike. It's my first yeah. traveling family. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, my first traveling family that oh, I. Oh, wow. Yeah, my mom. Yes, lots of us out there. Julian going to be a motorcycle rider. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Julian, like your dad. Yeah, he's got to be. He was in it in the womb. <laughs> Feel the bump. Not to care like that. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I know that you can probably talk about the community on the um, on the aspect of Julian getting to go to babies under rent. Yes. I think that's what it's called, like a brunch yeah, or yeah. There is a brunch. Yeah. So there's so many things that um. I want to go. Yeah, that you can get yourself into in terms of like having um having kids having family support like other families like you um there's like a baby's under one meetup there's a lot of resources just here in merida like um little baby gyms and um baby play places yeah things like that it's very child oriented most restaurants you go to a lot of restaurants have a kids play area like more restaurants than i've seen in parts of the states for sure yeah. um and it just doesn't make have it to easy. be luxury no it's yeah it's not it's it's like Downstairs. affordable mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so they just understand kind of family dynamic living like you know waiting at a restaurant table for your food with your children who are trying to jump off the walls like <laughs> might as well put them in a place they can literally jump off the walls and there's a nanny as- a restaurant nanny waiting for them yes there. yeah there's like adult supervision um most of them are very visible as well like you're not too far from your glass child. windows yeah, glass, yeah. yeah yeah so you don't just have to like drop your child off in the room and i literally ordered a glass of water 
guacamole, chips and dip, and I read a book. I let him go play with the kids and read a book mm-hmm. at the restaurant. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it's nice. Something you can never get. And it's free. <laughs> right. Oh, Jesus. And, like, good food. You don't have to go to, like, a McDonald's to get a play place. You can go to a nice restaurant. Um, there's a lot of places in, like, I'm trying to think all of the grocery stores that have play places near them and like the mall area yeah like malls you're gonna always have like a free playground whether indoor or outdoor to the food court at the mall access. has a huge mm-hmm. playground in the middle mm-hmm. and everybody just eat around the children <laughs> right very easy to just like pop up at a park with some food and drinks yeah. and have a time you can get some adult socialization get your kids socializing have fun with your kids yeah and it's safe like i think we left the park the other night at like 9 30 10 p.m yeah nobody's worrying about like something popping off so Mm -hmm. it's good it's really good Make that change. Book mm-hmm. your ticket. Come on, let's go to Mexico. Yes. Yeah, this should be the beginning of this video. Do that, Cam. <laughs> Good note, yes. Let's go. Are you still going to do... together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so childish. What did you say? I said, are you still going to do consulting services for people that want to... Oh, I actually forgot here. about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to start doing the consulting services for people that want to come here and I can help you and connect you with you with the community I was in. Mm-hmm. Just, I feel like it's really needed for, uh, from you doing, you're coming to see it from a, a real life person, like it can happen, it can work. Mm-hmm. Instead of jumping out there and doing it yourself, because I jumped out there and did it myself, but I learned a lot from Facebook. Yeah. I got everybody making Facebook. Uh, even if you don't want to, a one-on-one consultation then you can literally go on facebook and i would say go into some groups ask questions don't be afraid to be shut down Mm -hmm. and people are going to come with negativity obviously it's life and then you're going to get your answers and then you'll be able to get up and go yep like i did yeah probably like you did too yeah man facebook travel groups are so funny (laughs) there just be some some haters on there right i'm like (laughs) The things they told me. <laughs> Somebody told me you're posting in the wrong group. Try this group instead. And I was like, I got so much love from the second group. Mm. I think it was an ex- I never knew the word expat. I, I was not a traveler. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. when I learned the word expat, those are the groups I just jumped into. Right. It's like and I jumped word. into all of them. Mm-hmm. Cancun expats. Oh, snap. <laughs> Puerto Morales. I was just jumping into all of them. And I'm here, mm-hmm. Merida. <laughs> Yep. It's good to know what the other side looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, doing, Anything else we need to talk about? Mm-hmm. You want to talk about? I'm thirsty. Cheers. Hydrate in Maryland, please. It oh, it's is so important. hot. <laughs> it's so hot. That's another thing. Yeah. Heat. At first, I didn't want to come back. Mm-hmm. I did not want to come back. I'm like, this heat is crazy. Mm-hmm. It's one month long of just heat, 110 mm-hmm. degrees, hot for no reason. Mm-hmm. And I'm from Texas. You would think that I should know this heat. I should be accustomed to it. Yeah, it's different. It's very different. Mm-hmm. And before I came here, I find you a house that has a pool. Like, see, I'm like, it doesn't matter. I don't need a pool. I need a pool. Definitely makes a difference. <laughs> yeah. Definitely makes a difference. <laughs> Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> Do you want to say something too? What do you want to say? I was born in this house. Mm-hmm. I don't think they can see Julie. Oh, no? I don't think so either. I don't know. They can hear him. Mm-hmm. Julie, yeah. Julie, yeah. That's going to be the. <laughs> He's making a song. Right. Yeah, it feels so good to have people birthed out here, though. Yeah, it does. And I did it. You did it in your in the home mm-hmm. without any medication. And that was one thing you were like really worried about. People even telling you like, "Oh, Naomi, you can't do that." I asked. I think I asked. Did I ask you to me? Give me something. The pain. I was like, "Is there something?" Yeah, you kept yeah. asking like, "What can we do? What can we do?" And I would just sit there and be like, "Nothing." Like you got it. I Becca was like, um, during, while I was giving labor, in labor, in labor, Becca was like, um, 
We, everybody in here did it. Literally, Daisy gave birth at home. Sumi gave birth. Everybody, <laughs> Melanie mm-hmm. and Becca. Everybody that was around me gave birth at home. Here in Mexico, too, right? Not, uh, not, not Daisy, Daisy, but yeah. 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 Melanie was like, you want to try your work? Um, your yeah. side? Uh, that's how I gave birth. Yeah. And I was like, this bed too soft. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, there's just kind of a point where you feel like you definitely had to recognize your inner strength and like I think Sumi told you put your big curl pants on at one point. Yes, yeah. definitely surrender to it. Yeah, yeah, surrender. Yeah. And then as I look back at it, it wasn't even as bad as I thought. Mm-hmm. It really wasn't. A lot of it is mental. I would say. I told my mom, home birth ain't even harder, as hard as I thought. She's like, you see why I had eight kids? I said, I don't see why you had eight. No. <laughs> I don't see that. It's easy to pop these things out. <laughs> Just that. Two hours. Woo. Life. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you so much, Becca, for allowing me this, you know, mm-hmm. to come here and give me this opportunity because I feel like more love came here than if I would have been in my own apartment. Yeah. Having y'all have to come get in the car, come out. Yeah. It wouldn't have worked out the way it was supposed to, right. how it did in, in your house. For sure, yeah. It was easier for me that way, for sure. Yeah. I'm not having to leave my family. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I thank you, too, for allowing me to be part of this experience with you and letting me into an important, vulnerable time of your life, you know? <laughs> yeah, very so, vulnerable. Yeah. Thank you so much. Can we say goodbye? You want to say goodbye? You want to say bye bye, Mona? Julian, say bye bye. We were born here at Kaye. <laughs> Kaye 18. Come give birth in my house. Oh, to Brisa. <laughs> right. <laughs> Woo. Mm. She's sleeping. She's like, why are you doing this to me? I'm sorry, mamas. Cool. Let's cut it. Uh-huh. Sorry, mama.